What does the cross stand for? Why did Jesus give up his life? And what does that mean for us as Christians? Last year, I was walking out on the road uh, with this t-shirt, Preach Christ, and someone shouted out from the car, you're gonna get killed out there for wearing that t-shirt. And uh, it had on the back, uh, you know, Preach Christ Crucified on there. Isn't it the case that when we wear the cross, we make ourselves a target? It's the cry of our generation. Deep down inside, we all know that to really live, you gotta be willing to die. St. Paul says in his, in his first letter to the Corinthians, 123, that we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. And this is the crucifixion narrative from Luke, uh, chapter 23, 32 through 38. Two other criminals were also led away to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there along with the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. The people stood watching and even the leaders were scoffing. He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the son of God, God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. An inscription was above him. This is the king of the Jews. The crucifixion is really quite the event. The Son of God, God incarnate, dies upon a cross. And it's a bloody event filled with so much pain and suffering. And yet, what do we see through it all is that when Jesus is questioned by Pontius Pilate, he affirms who he is. When he's carrying his cross, he embraces it. And when he falls down, he gets back up. And on the cross when he's dying, he intentionally offers his life. Jesus is the perfect image of the Father, you know, like Father, like Son. And he reveals to us the true identity of the Father, a Father who forgives unconditionally, who is willing to give everything in self-gift. This is Numbers 21, 7 through 9. The people then came to Moses and said, we have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Intercede with the Lord so that he will take the snakes away from us. And Moses interceded for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake image and mount it on a pole. When anyone who is bitten looks at it, he will recover. So Moses made a bronze snake and mounted it on a pole. Whenever someone was bitten and he looked at the bronze snake, he recovered. On the cross, Jesus is beyond the point of recognition. He appears as himself mutilated and distorted, just as we are mutilated and distorted by sin. But on the cross, he cries out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus Christ himself, the body of Christ, and his church become a source of healing and of mercy. When we look at ourselves and our sinfulness and remember the times that we've fallen, when we despise the name of Christ or when we hurt others, we see ourselves as torn apart and broken by sin. But brothers and sisters, do not allow yourselves to fall into despair because Jesus will always forgive. He redeems and he restores. No matter what you've done in your life, Jesus will still forgive you and the Father will still love you. That's what the cross is all about. I wanted to share with you some of the last words that Jesus gives to his own mother at the foot of the cross. And this is John 19, 26 through 27. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing there, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. It's kind of interesting that Jesus calls his own mother woman, but there's a reason that he does that. He's, he's reminding us of Eve in the Garden of Eden, who was the first woman. Just as, And there's an incredible parallel that takes place. Just as Eve took the fruit from the tree of life, bringing sin and death into the world, Mary 
places the fruit of her womb upon the tree of death, bringing grace and life to us all. Jesus is crucified between two thieves. And if you've ever wondered what final judgment looks like, we can kind of see what it looks like here. And this is Luke 23, 39 through 43. Then one of the criminals hanging there began to yell insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other answered, rebuking him. Don't you even fear God, since you are undergoing the same punishment? We are punished justly because we're getting back what we deserve for the things we did. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said to him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Both of these thieves are similar in that they're both experiencing the punishment you know, for their actions in life. And yet there's a huge difference between them. Whereas the one ridicules Jesus in his self-offering, in his forgiveness, the other asks for mercy. So what's the takeaway point? And what does this mean for us as Christians? This is Luke 23, verse 46. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. Saying this, he breathed his last. Even if you were the only person in the whole world, Jesus would die for you. This is something that each one of us needs to hear, and it doesn't always hit home. Jesus died on the cross in order to reveal the incredible love of the Father, to reveal the Father's name, to reveal the Father who is love itself. This is John 19, 33 through 34. When they came to Jesus, they did not break his legs since they saw that he was already dead. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out. This blood and water, this is the saving stream coming from the heart of Christ. This flow is the source of grace. This flow is the source of the church. By his blood, by his wounds, by his sacred heart pierced, we are made a new creation. Why don't we end in a prayer? Jesus, help us to enter into the mystery of your passion and death. And help us to realize your passionate love and the merciful love of the Father. What could separate us from the love of Christ? Neither height nor depth, neither life nor death. Lord, we give you all of our sinfulness, give you our brokenness, and we ask for your mercy and healing. Father, we ask to become a new creation by the passion and death of your Son. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.